floors. Evening, everyone. <laughs> My friend Emily here is going to read us a quick prayer to lead us into tonight's wherever God wants to take us. Yahweh, we unite together as one body and one spirit and one mind. As a united front, we push back the gates of hell, for they will not prevail against the vast army of God. We lock our shields, uniting us as one force. We come together dressed as warriors to be empowered, equipped for the working of the ministry. We do not come here to get our ears tickled, but to sharpen our swords with one another, just like in the upper room. Division is not tolerated. It leaves now. It grieves the Holy Ghost. Bitterness and offense go now. Pro spiritual pride and competition leaves now. Rebellion and gossip leaves now. We choose to forgive quickly. Here we serve and promote one another. We see one another through the blood of our Christ Jesus, even on our worst day. Here is where we worship in one accord in spirit and truth. All unbelief leaves now. We shall come to the throne room of grace and childlike faith, knowing you are the breakthrough. We come hungry to overflow our cups, only to pour it out again into a hungry world. We give you full reign to come and do only what you can, Abba. We surrender all to you. May your goodness convict us into a revelation to transform us into your image. We happily get out of the way so you can break in and break out. We honor our Lord and King, Yahweh, high and lifted up as one. Amen. Amen. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, well, glorious evening. I will try my best to convey what's been on my heart for the last several days. Um, even listening to that last song kind of wrecked me a little bit, so I'm trying to it together. <laughs> but we're going to start in Hebrews 12, uh, verse 25, and this is the Mirror Bible, and I'll read um, all the way to verse 28. If Jesus is the crescendo of God's final message to mankind, you cannot afford to politely excuse yourself from this conversation. Consider the prominent place that Moses plays in the history of Israel. If you think that Moses or any other prophets who spoke with authority on earth deserve honor, how much more should this word that God declared from heaven concerning our sonship and our redeemed innocence revealed in the Messiah himself, deserve our undivided attention. That's just so good. <laughs> when he introduced the pro prophet shadow or prophetic shadow of what was to come, the law system, his voice visibly shook the earth, but now the Messiah has come. He he is the one the law and the prophets pointed to, the desire of the nations. He is what heaven and earth were waiting for. The voice of God articulated in Christ's birth, life, ministry, and death, and resurrection has rocked not only the systems on the earth, but also every unseen principality and the heavens to their very foundation. In the words of the prophet, yet once more will I shape every unstable system of man's efforts to rule himself. Wow. God, God clearly indicates his plan to remove the old and replace it with the new. The second shaking supersedes any significance in the first shaking. Then it was a physical quaking of the earth. Now the very foundations of every man-made system was shaken to the core while the heavens were impacted by the announcement of his permanent rule on earth as it is mirrored in heaven. We are fully associated in this immovable kingdom in an authority that cannot be challenged or contradicted. 
our participation echoes grace and not law, fear-inspired obedience. As we accommodate ourselves to God's delight, yielding in awe of his firm embrace, his zeal for us burns like fire. Wow. Oh, I know that's a lot. <laughs> But the Lord really has been showing me, even today at worship, this right before coming on, the Lord was showing me himself calling to his bride. And I saw the bride of Christ in all of her splendor and all of her glory, carrying this, the word of God in her left hand. As she comes out of the desert place and she's singing to, to her beloved Yeshua. But God, Jesus, and Holy Spirit are also calling to those who are willing to listen. <clears throat> willing to heed his call. Mm -hmm. yes. <sighs> Try not to cry. <laughs> I've been so messed up for the past couple of days and just really worshiping the Lord and who He is and not really focusing on praying for something like a prayer list. I'm not saying those are bad, but I just like really felt that I needed to come to a place. And really recognize who he is. <laughs> and I'll share out of um, our Bible. I went to, down here. It says, the author issues a final warning to those contemplated turning away from Christ. If severe punishment fell upon those who rejected the revelation of Sinai, much more severe will be will be the penalty upon those who disregard the full revelation they have in Christ. The return of the Lord will signal the removal of all that is earthly and temporal in order that only heavenly and spiritual realities may remain. Therefore, let us have grace and severe and serve God acceptably. So if we go to Haggai 2.6 through verse 9. So Haggai 2. Uh, verse 6 through 9. I got it. For thus says the Lord of hosts, once more, it is a little while, I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the, des they shall come to the desire of all nations, and I will fill this temple with glory says the Lord of hosts, and the silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of the latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts, and in this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. Mm. And as I have been just going over these verses, over the past several days, the Lord keeps showing me how important it is for us as believers and those who are yet to be believers in Christ to really clean our own temple, to really go to God for everything. And to, yes, in our hour of need, but to just go to him and worship him for who he is. And in that intimate time of worship with the Lord, he cleanses you of everything. 
and he cleanses you with his blood and washes you afresh and his Holy Spirit. Jesus is eventually coming back. I don't know when, but the Lord keeps showing me how, <laughs> how desperate and hungry he is for his children to truly know who they are, that they are sons and daughters of God. And in my prayer time, the last couple of days, the Lord's really been oppressing that upon me. And I keep hearing that every time I pray and I can feel his heart and hear, hear his voice. It's like, oh, if only they would hear me, if only they knew what I was praying for them. If they only could hear, if they only would just listen and obey. God is looking for those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness. Because that is his heart. That is his heart cry for his the sons and daughters to come alive in him. And I believe that there's just this deep call of heaven calling to the believers in, on the earth to come alive. To stop conforming to the image of the world and be transformed to the image of God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like stop allowing this, even the small foxes that come in, stop allowing those things to speak louder than what God has already spoken. Like I was, I had sent a friend, um, was it Genesis 28? Genesis chapter 28? Uh, yes, okay. chapter 28. The so Genesis chapter 28, starting in verse 10. Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at the, his head. And he lay down in the place to sleep. Then he dreamed and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth. And its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending, ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south, and in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. And I believe that the Lord is not just speaking that to certain people, but he's speaking that to the believers. Because God has already given us the land. God has already placed us where we're at. For such a time as this, I know you probably have heard this multiple times, but heaven keeps echoing the same thing until we get a hold of what it's saying and actually do what it's saying mm -hmm. and not just sit around and talk about it, but go and do and be it. Be the word made flesh. And I believe the Lord has given us land, not just for 425, not just for certain people or places but for all those believing believers to take back what satan has tried to <laughs> manipulate and transform and he can even transform anything he's just trying to make his own image into something because he he's just naughty he's just naughty you say he's naughty yes <laughs> 
if God is calling us to take back what God has already promised us. God promised us this land years ago before we even were here on earth. Because we were his, we we are God's promise to himself. So why would we not want to come into alignment with what God has already said? Because we are the DNA of God. We have the DNA of God in us. So I just encourage you just to go after God, go after what he has already said to do, and become the word that he has already spoken to you about. Well. Don't <laughs> don't do what I used to do and run after a word, another prophetic word, another prophetic word, and wondering why the first prophetic word never came to pass in the first place is because I never became the first prophetic word in the first place. Because I did not come into alignment with that. Where I tried to make it happen on my own. Mm. Rather than aligning with heaven with what it what heaven is already saying. And don't allow those small foxes and the enemy to come in and even on small things and just like tear you down because you did something wrong or this, that, and the other thing. Like even today at work, it was, I started feeling sorry for myself and I had to take a minute and be like, why am I feeling sorry for myself? I'm a daughter of the king. Nobody can make me feel that unless I allow it. So I just encourage you to rise up, sons and daughters, and truly become who your father God has already called you out to be. So I just, that's all I really had. I didn't have much. What was that? You want to pray this part out at least or anything? So then we'll stop recording. Sure. Okay. So Lord, I just thank you for not only your word, but your word made flesh, not only in Jesus, but your word made flesh in us. Yes. That we would continue to walk out what you have already given us. That we are joint heirs in Jesus Christ and we have all of heaven. We have all of our sustenance. We have everything that we possibly could ever need because we are in you and you are in us. And help us just to continually to yield and obey your voice every second of the day. In Jesus' name, amen.